I can see with the eyes of the Spirit and I see a mighty army rising yes I know they're rising in the thousands coming from afar coming from afar can I tell you this the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1 it says through desire a man having separated himself that he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom you need to go for knowledge buy books before shoes get knowledge before you start getting the adorning of clothes it is painful to look great and yet be empty unfortunately unfortunately we live in a world today that does not mind people can be as empty as a keg and yet you decorate it and it looks so full i rather look i rather look carry a physical fashion that makes you underestimate me and then be full and rich within than to look so successful and visionary and then when you come in you find out that it's an empty gong someone shout god forbid, god forbid. can i tell you this you need to invest in knowledge you don't invest in knowledge in a hurry you need to sit down what does it take oh god you are giving me a global ministry as a man of god a global prophetic ministry a global pastoral ministry yes lord i have received it but a global ministry comes with a global burden i need wisdom spirituality leadership organization finances i need to understand this i obtain grace when others are snoring and sleeping away their destiny you are awake lord i obtain grace your eyes are sleepy it looks like two people are sitting on your eyes you shake it away and say no way i'm going far i obtain grace may the spirit of laziness be far from us in the name of jesus may the spirit the destiny destroying spirit of laziness may it be far from us there are many people who will tell you they want to be preachers they don't even read up to one hour per week I'm telling you sincerely, even if there are no demons, you will still fail. <laughs> because demons are not the only, demons only account for about 30% or so of real failure. A major part of failure is ignorance or insufficient knowledge. I've taught you here, if you scored 35%, you didn't get zero and yet you still failed. Is that true? If the cutoff mark is 50 and you get 48, you didn't get zero, but you will still stand at the same place with those who got zero. Take away shame from your life by investing in knowledge. It is not good to look dull and be dull. Now, I'm not saying this mocking you. Knowledge is, a, is an equalizer. You may not come from a privileged family, I agree. You may not have a personal that is very inviting and you know, but let knowledge equalize you. It's a bailout system. Take away shame from your life and stop all the petty jealousy and sit down. Go for knowledge. I don't speak English very well, I agree. I may not be as beautiful or handsome as people would want to be. I may not be like that celebrity, but the one God gave you, your brain is healthy. Use it. In the name of Jesus, sit down. Buy books. Don't go online just browsing profitless things that will not. I've told you this thing, and I've said it with, with the sincere heart of a shepherd. Not to pry into your privacy. I am telling you, most people, the time, if they take half the time they use, roaming around social media in a profitless way, and invest it in constructive knowledge, I assure you by God, they will not remain at that level. Some of you know what is happening in everybody's life except your own destiny. 
That should not be. Are we together? Say, I receive grace to go for knowledge. Apostle, what do I learn about? You see, when you know where you are going, you now find out those who are going that direction and you begin to study their mindsets and study the first kind of knowledge you need is the awareness of your current state that itself is a miracle do you know that if you if you are aware that you are in need that knowledge of your inadequacy is already a miracle are we together not knowing that you have a problem is a serious problem itself follow them who through faith and patience what did they study god has called you to be a kingdom financier you can be jumping till rapture happens and you miss out your assignment and even miss rapture if you are not careful and yet you there, you, you know we talk is cheap I, i'm saying this with with, with uh, i hope i hope i'm not um i hope we're still friends Please sit down. Please sit down. Go back home and sit down. Carry your Bible and look for one book. Apostle, I'm in ministry. What book should I get? Even if you don't know it, at least go to a bookstore. Just roam around there and see. Holy Ghost, I'm now here. I left my house and the Holy Spirit will take you somewhere. I don't have money, oh, at least search. Nobody will query you for searching around. And somebody will come and say, you look like a determined young man. You are looking at that book. It's a nice book. I read it. Pick it up. You'll get both a relationship and favor because you took a step. Go for knowledge. Till today, I study like I don't know anything. Because truly, without flattery, with respect to where God is taking me, there are many things I do not know. And so I sit down and I study, I study, I study. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Is that in your Bible? A workman. Please, let me tell you this. If you are a man of God, I submit to you with all due respect. Forget about, you be ready for empty pews if you are not rich in knowledge. The generation, the world we live in today is the world of serious people. A man will not carry his wife and children and their destiny and come and be part of your vision and sit down every week to listen to nonsense. No. People love you, but they love their destinies. Nobody is ready to waste his time like that, to travel from one nation to come. And let me also challenge everyone, career people, please, in the name of Jesus, go for knowledge. Go for knowledge. Find out what you don't know about and find out how to learn from it. Don't make the same mistake two times. Apostle, I'm broke. Do you know how to be rich? Eh, listen to one message like that. Is it fair that you just carelessly listen to a 20-minute message and actually believe you should be a millionaire from it? Whereas people, people who have been working even in the civil service for 30 years are still struggling to stand and you just cheapen life like that. No. There are many of us who do not know the real cost of being great. We have downplayed the cost of greatness and reduced it just because of things like favor. Don't forget, by the grace of God, the person talking to you, I understand favor. Wave laziness goodbye and force it to wave you back. That you, you stand in the name of Jesus, some of you from this night, gather if i come to your house i don't don't show me the cars and the houses those things are transitory let me see what you're doing with your mind let me see let you can be in that one room with that trouser that is as cheap as whatever with people laughing at you don't worry show me what you are doing and i can tell you where you are going there are many many young people in our nation who are not going anywhere 
they believe that destiny will just open up because of a bold face it takes more than that it takes capacity everybody say knowledge everybody say wisdom and can i tell you this in pursuit of destiny if god ever by any means makes the job easier for you by granting you access to the minds of those who know what they are saying please don't trivialize it listen don't sit down with a champion and be tampering the equation you are not there yet you don't have the results you see for some people it is not the absence of helpers or knowledge it is sheer pride africa for instance you'll find people who have no result they are broke they are poor they are oppressed they have no anointing they have no influence yet they want to teach you on everything pertaining influence anointing prosperity let's respect results are we together when i sit in the presence of people who have what i do not have i don't argue even if i don't entirely agree i have to honor the presence of the results that is before me and listen number number four are you ready the fourth key spend time praying for your life and your destiny that is the fourth key you want to actualize destiny you must spend time invest time in fact that's the word invest time praying for your life and your destiny oh may god help you believe this thing i'm teaching in the name of jesus christ you must spend time praying for your life it's good to intercede i've taught you on intercession it's good to pray for people but there are times you have to honestly zoom the attention on you and your destiny and invest time generate energy praying for your life and praying for your destiny apostle but i thought you were praying for me i will continue to pray for you as a man of god but even Jesus is praying for you. Even for those who are suffering, he's interceding for them too. If you don't take responsibility over your destiny and pray till you tear off the gates. Listen, especially for those of you, if you come from a background where you know that you are the first to do what you are about to do, you are the one who breaks the iron gate. You better pray. You better pray. Grandfather tried it and died. Grandmother tried it and died siblings tried it and died now you are the one that iron gate has never been broken you must pray the one who is grandfather or grandmother at least open part of the gate is just for him to finish opening it that one's life is easier for you there is a chain on it and there is a spirit holding the chain lord i will not fail in life days become weeks weeks become months what are you doing i am praying you are just lazying around don't call prayer lazying around there is vision and purpose connected to it somebody say i will pray one more time say i will pray matthew chapter 4 please from verse 1 this is jesus preparing to begin his ministry jesus was led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil the bible says next verse when he had what fasted 40 days and 40 nights you would think that because he was jesus he had already listen look at jesus he discovered already his place he was determined to fulfill it he had spent time getting knowledge from age 12 he was in the temple and you would think just because he had acquired knowledge it was over the bible says he prayed and fasted 40 days and 40 nights and not even hunger stopped him i don't know any great man i may be wrong i'm learning too but i don't know any great man especially in the kingdom and in ministry who cannot point seasons of his life where he fasted the kind of fast that even the devil will look with shock and say ah this person you have energy oh. And it's easier to fast when you have not made it yet that's why it's good to because all the distractions are less 
how much do you have that temptation will come you you focus and fast yes sir whether you fasted or not you were not even going to eat very well after all so you you use the opportunity you are praying giving yourself an excuse are we together mark chapter 1 please mark chapter 1 from verse 35 mark chapter 1 35 this was jesus after a busy day he had started ministry so we see him praying even before ministry would start now ministry started already and he was doing so well morning till night busy schedules and the bible says in the morning rising up a great while everybody say discipline mm. he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed there prayed you must pray there are forces that will try to fight you from starting if they cannot succeed they will be waiting for you at the gate of honor so that they will bring you shame don't you think because you started the devil will fold his arms the bible said he left jesus for a season every great man here listen let me tell you if you think because you are great and everything is working everything is fine think again go and ask there is a skill that maintains greatness one of it is the consistent fortification of yourself with prayer people are praying for you but you must pray for yourself because when satan sees that you are high up there he will begin to scheme things to make sure because he knows that in your coming down is the coming down of many so instead of attacking two million people he will attack you there are battles that you have no business fighting but when you become great it's a battle that must involve you please obtain grace to pray everybody say i will pray, I will pray. apostle thank god me i'm not in ministry i'm just in business pray more the king of tyre is sitting where you are there that is his headquarters have you heard about tyre and sedon tyre and sidon you must pray the devil would not commit millions and billions to your hands when he knows that your heart is already inclined to the kingdom now go and ask people who practice occultism before they become wealthy they come under all kinds of oaths oaths with blood incisions to say listen these are the do's and don'ts as far as using this money is concerned you can there are wealthy people today who cannot give you more than ten thousand they are not greedy it is based on the oath that brought that wealth to the point that even their physical parents or siblings can be in the hospital deathbed but they are not allowed to bring that money you think they are greedy it is the condition that was given to them that's why the bible says the blessing of the lord make it rich and adds no sorrow are we together spend time praying first thessalonians chapter 3 second thessalonians chapter 3 from verse 1 and 2 second thessalonians chapter 3 from verse 1 and 2 finally brethren pray for us that the word of the lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you verse 2 and that we be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men for all men have not faith do not assume that just because everybody is laughing at or laughing with you they mean you well this is a world that is full of wickedness the bible says this world is a habitation of cruelty are we together why must this family be rising why must this man of god be rising why must this sister be rising why must this politician be rising why must this career person be rising look at jesus innocently bringing glory to the father and a few people came together and said look we have to do something about this man he's still in our show oh but prayer is powerful you can get into that control room and begin to make things he said has thou commanded thy morning 
please obtain grace to pray for your destiny in the name of Jesus invest time praying invest time praying invest time praying don't pray out of fear pray as a not just as a principle of survival but your prayer will give room for you to keep making progress number five are you ready is God helping us tonight let's hurry up number five embrace a life of competence and excellence point number five you want to actualize destiny you must embrace a life of competence and excellence three scriptures very quickly proverbs 22 29 popular scripture embrace a life of competence and excellence it says seest thou a man diligent in his business leaves you with an assurance he shall stand before kings he shall not stand before average ordinary or mean men you want to rise beyond the average in life and destiny for the sake of the kingdom you must be diligent a diligent preacher will be a great preacher a diligent businessman will be a great businessman a diligent politician will be a great politician everybody say competence what is competence mastery we just finished a series on striving for mastery listen to it again you must become a master at something otherwise shame and reproach will always be within the corridor of your destiny make up your mind that you are not given the assignment of being and knowing everything but as far as the things that pertain to the area of your call and destiny is concerned please hold it with mastery and take away shame from your life genesis chapter 41 we'll jump the verses because of time give us verse 14 and then we'll jump to 29 down to 33 and then 37 we're jumping we're examining the life of joseph ready 14 then pharaoh sent and called joseph and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came unto pharaoh to 29 now 29 to 33 behold there come seven years of plenty he's interpreting the king's dream now throughout all the land of Egypt we're reading to 33 uh-huh next verse and there shall arise after them seven years of famine and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt and the famine shall consume the land 31 and the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of the famine following for it shall be very grievous two more verses and for that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice, it is because the thing is established by God and God will shortly bring it to pass. The last verse and then we'll jump to 37. Now therefore, look at him bringing a solution now. Let Pharaoh look out for a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. 37. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. Next verse. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? Next verse. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has shown thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou. May that be your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ that we will search and search and honestly come to the conclusion that you are truly exceptional that we will say your kind is rare in the name of Jesus Christ next verse please and Pharaoh okay thou shall be over my house and according unto my word shall all my people be ruled look at instant honor that came because of competence and excellence it says only in the throne will i be greater than thou next verse we are reading to 46 and pharaoh said unto joseph see i have set thee over all the land of egypt and pharaoh took off his ring from his hand 
and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck and he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had and they cried before him bow the knee and made him ruler over all the land of Egypt three more verses and Pharaoh said to Joseph I am Pharaoh and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt look at this and Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zavnath Pania and he gave him to wife Asenath, the daughter of Potiphera, the priest of On, and Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. Last verse, and Joseph was how old? Wow. And Joseph was thirty years old when he stood before the king of Egypt. When they put the ring when joseph began to do exploits at a national level he was 30 years old that means there is no excuse and for those of you who are saying ah 30 years okay that's old what of joash who was king at age eight josiah king at age nine they were all kings as small as they were a child is not just a child in age a child is a child in knowledge are we together now yes you must embrace a life of competence and excellence two more number six am i right on that number six be disciplined and focused this is a big one i can spend the entire night dealing with this issue of discipline and focus there is no glorious destiny for any man and any woman that will compromise on the power of discipline and focus. Isaiah chapter 50, please. Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 7. Let's hurry up media. 50 and verse 7, Isaiah. For the Lord will help me, therefore I shall not be confounded. Therefore I have set my face like a flint and I know that I shall not be ashamed. Second Timothy chapter two and verse four. Second Timothy chapter two and verse four. It says, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. He's given an impression that if you make up your mind that you are a soldier, then you have to adopt the, the discipline of a military man. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. Hebrews 12 and verse 1. Wherefore, seeing also that we are compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside, say lay aside, every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us, and to run with patience the race that is set before us. There are two things he says to lay aside, sin and weight. You can lay aside sin and not lay aside weight. Weight is anything that is unnecessary as far as the journey is concerned. There are many good things in your life you must be able to cut away from. You don't have to cut away from evil things alone. There are many good things that are not profitable for your destiny. Are we together? Yes, sir. There are many good things you are going to have to say no to for the sake of where you are going. Many good things that you have to say no to. Number seven, and that will lead me into a very important subtopic and then we'll pray. Are you ready? The seventh point, if you want to actualize destiny, you must develop endurance. You must develop endurance. I will define for you what endurance is. You must develop endurance. Are you ready? I define endurance as the ability to stand and survive pain and pressure while maintaining focus. Endurance, the ability to stand 
and survive pain and pressure while maintaining focus endurance the ability to stand and survive pain and pressure while maintaining focus this one key here dear people of god if you have six over seven and this is the key you failed you will still abort destiny strangely endurance james chapter one james chapter one from verse two and three james chapter one from verse two and three my brethren he says count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations knowing this verse 3 that the trying of your faith worketh patience in fact let's read verse 4 it says but let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing everybody say endurance there are two reasons I have seen why people generally, in spite of the fact that they work in keeping with these other keys, while they are unable to really maximize destiny and become all that God has ordained them to be. Number one is excuses. They will always give excuses. And you see, to one who is determined to find a reason not to rise, you will always find one. Excuses. And then number two, the second reason is violating the law of process. I want to end my teaching tonight by teaching us something about the law of process. Please, open up your heart and open your spirit because for some of you this will be an answer right now to your prayer are you ready to pray one more time lord open my eyes yet again open my eyes for the sake of my destiny for the sake of all those who are looking up to me make sure you are praying those following online azaria family and those connecting across the globe make sure your heart is open pray let it be from the depth of your heart open my eyes hallelujah write this down as a subtopic the law of process i need to teach you this very quickly mark chapter 4 please mark chapter 4 many great people from verse 26 have aborted destiny because they do not understand this mystery of the kingdom called process and he said so is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground. Next verse, next verse. Miss here, let's walk together. And should sleep and rise night and day and the seed should spring and grow up. He knoweth not how. 28 now. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. But how does it happen? First, the blade. Is it in your Bible? then the air after that the full corn in the air we're reading to 32 but when the fruit is brought forth immediately he put it in the sickle because the harvest is come 30 and he said whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of god or with what comparison shall we compare it it is like the grain of mustard seed which when it is sown in the earth is less than all the seeds that be in the earth last verse but when it is sown it groweth up and becometh greater than all the herbs and shooteth out great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it I had the privilege of learning this deep law of destiny very early in life the law of process write this down please everyone you must be tested and proven in order to be honored by God you must be tested and proven 
in order to be honored by God. Deuteronomy chapter 8, we're looking at scriptures from verse 11. You must be tested and proven in order to be honored by God. There is nobody who will taste of genuine kingdom honor as far as destiny and the kingdom is concerned until and unless you are tested and you are proven. We we'll begin our reading from verse 11. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command you this day. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full and art built goodly houses and dwelt therein and when thy herds and flocks multiply and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied and all that thou hast is multiplied 14 then thy heart shall be lifted up this is why god needs to test and prove people it's a tendency in the heart of all men without exception and forget the lord thy god which brought thee forth out of the land of egypt from the house of bondage 15 who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness wherein were fiery serpents scorpions drought where there was no water who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint 16 it says who fed thee let's read 16 together ready one to read who fed thee in the wilderness with manna which thy fathers knew not why that he might humble thee and that he might prove thee to what end to do thee good at thy latter end let me tell you sincerely god tests people god proves people even men prove people before they lift them there is no responsible man there is no responsible leader there is no responsible father who will not test and prove people to ascertain their capacity and their capabilities before lifting them and even their tendencies you must be tested and psalm 66 verse 12 psalm 66 and verse 12 thou hast caused men to ride over our heads <laughs> we went through fire and through water but thou broughtest us into a wealthy place but before we got there you caused men to ride over our heads we went through fire and we went through water which one is better fire or water <laughs> Are we together? It's like saying, which one is better? To die by shooting or to die by an arrow? All of them will cause something to your body and you will still die. You cause men to ride over our heads. We went through water and through fire. But the same you brought us into a wealthy place process is very powerful there will always be seasons in a man's life where God will be proving you to prune every tendency that can destroy and abort your glorious future and let me tell you the truth that is about the hardest face in the life of a believer because at those points I taught you this already that is when you experience what we call the silence of God you will live in the silence of God once and again i can see with the eyes of the spirit and i see a mighty army rising yes i know they're rising in the thousands coming from afar coming from afar 